Could I ask, is anyone actually considering a career in geoarchaeology? Because I can focus it on the one or two people that might be in there. Okay, well, I'm off the hook. <laughs> 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 um, well, to follow up on what you just said, I mean, I wasn't lucky. I was, I was lucky in the sense I was working for a unit that I had a geoarchaeologist like Mike there who was willing to mentor people in the field, and that's something I'll probably return to. So I've gone slightly, um, slightly off the... Uh, off message, mostly on account that I didn't really read the brief properly, but I think it still does the job just about. So I thought I'd do a bit about, very short bit about who Wessex are, and most of my um, slides are about the range of different things that we do as commercial geoarchaeologists, because actually there's a lot of stuff we do and not all of it is stuff that might be obvious. Uh, briefly talk about the opportunities there are at the minute and make a few suggestions uh, for what people might like to do if they're trying to get into geoarchaeology. So Wessex, um, we've got six regional offices, we're up to about 320 something people at the minute. Um, we do all of the archaeological things across all of the environment, so underwater, and in rivers, dormant terrestrial stuff as well. And the geoarchaeology and environmental teams, uh, which I run as one team, has got 15 people altogether, seven or eight of them are geoarchaeologists, depending on the given day that you ask them, there's a couple that could be both. Of those, I think five have got uh, PhDs or MPhils, a couple more are Masters. We've got one who doesn't have a degree or a, a Masters, but he's come through on the job training uh, from being a processor. The Geoarch and Enviro section is part of the Geo Services section, which I, I think might be something we made up, but works quite well. So. Uh, most of the science remote sensing type things grouped under under one roof, which is, is working really well. So geophysics, marine geophysics, geomatics, and uh, geoarch and environmental, and that enables us to run some interesting sort of projects together without being bothered too much by field work. So what do our geoarchaeologists do? Um, the thing you'd expect them to do most, field work support, so we're on site a lot, um, helping people with interpretation of features, of processes, giving advice, um, site formation processes I think we deal with most on site, um, advice on sampling which sometimes our environmental specialists go out and do, sometimes our geoarchaeologists will do. And we also do sciencey stuff on site like MagSus, phosphate sampling uh, and that sort of thing. We do some orga surveys although we try and do a lot less uh, as you can test might they, they cripple people quite quickly. <laughs> so. Nowadays we try and stick to borehole surveys, but if we're in um, wetland landscapes, we still do quite a lot of them. They're both to get, um, sometimes to get samples, but mostly to collect data rapidly of subsurface deposits over a, a large area. Borehole surveys we do a lot of. So these are purposive borehole surveys for geoarchaeology to take samples, usually through, well, in this case, coastal and often that picturesque, um, but river valleys and things like that to build up data for deposit models as well as to get samples of paleo environmental assessment and analysis. Ground investigation monitoring, um, so boreholes and trial pits mostly but that's uh, in support of engineering works. Um, they don't often look that happy or that's the South Sea and Holly lives about 300 yards away so she's very pleased to be there. We do a lot of marine geoarchaeology uh, which not everybody does. Um, so that's in conjunction with our marine geophysics um, team. We work a lot on offshore wind farms um, using uh, geophysical data, but also vibro cores that are taken from um, the engineering works uh, in support of the scheme. So unlike onshore, where you can generally direct where you want boreholes to be if we need some more, you can't do that as easily with um, offshore work, where it's more like a couple of hundred grand per core rather than one. Um, and that is mostly to investigate submerged paleo landscapes in support of the, uh, the usual seabed litter of um, wrecks that everybody gets so excited about. We do a lot of sediment description and interpretation in the lab, so on uh, sleeve course from those borehole surveys, from monolith samples, from site features and uh, sequences, ground investigation samples, I mean, this is where we do our subsampling for um, paleo environmental assessment and analysis work, so our guys will work out what's been laid down, how it's been laid down, what samples would best address the questions um, that are relevant to the site, and then we'd send them off to various specialists. We've got a similar range of specialists to Oxford in-house, so you know, Holland, uh, plant remains, but most stuff we send out. 
we are fortunate enough to have a Paleolithic geoarchaeologist now, so we do quite a lot of Pleistocene and Paleolithic investigations. So that's mostly digging and big test bits, doing quite a lot of sieving for um, flint, but I'm sure there's more to it. And we do a fair bit of the um, what falls in the gap between environmental and um, geoarchaeology, um, microfossils, macrofossils, and that sort of stuff. And we generally handle the scientific dating for the unit as well. We do a lot of deposit modelling. Um, that picture on the left is uh, from the cover of the new book that's been um, handed out in the hall at the minute. That's our site at New Common Garden Market, which is part of the Battersea Channel project area. So we've been working with um, Mola and Quest and various other people as part of the Battersea Channel project forum. That's been really interesting to work collaboratively and share data. Um, the one on the right is, I think, from the Olympic Park site um, about 10 years ago. We're doing a lot of geological desk based assessments, which vary depending what they're for. This is one from HS2, showed a very large scale um, assessments of the geoarchaeology of the route, which covers a lot of things but um, breaks down the landscape into different characterization zones and then selected areas for deposit modeling and various other things. And we get to do fun things together with the Geoservices Department. I can run specialist projects for uh, to investigate or rather to um, solve problems for complicated schemes in funny areas. So this is the Boston Barrier in um, Lincolnshire, which is um, we've got difficult and dangerous conditions with um, intertidal archaeology poking out as well as geoarchaeology underneath. So we sort of tackled this with. Um, orbit survey and deposit modelling to look at the what was underneath the ground combined with um, photogrammetry survey from drones uh, to record shipwrecks on the foreshore and to model the surface. So that's just about finished at the minute. That's more or less what we do. Uh, in terms of opportunities, I don't think there's ever been a better time to be a geoarchaeologist because there is a great demand for them. Unfortunately, it's probably never been a time where there are fewer geoarchaeologists being produced. Um, as we were just saying, Colin, there, there aren't many courses around that tackle it directly. But you don't necessarily have to have a geoarchaeology master's to be a geoarchaeologist. I mean, I was, I could arguably have been called a geoarchaeologist before I did my master's, and I, I left to formalise that and come back again. But a master's is very useful. It doesn't really have to be geoarchaeology. We've got people with um, qualifications in physical geography, in geology, things like that so there's a lot of transferable skills and yeah there are a very wide range of skill sets that can be applied to geoarchaeology uh, the, the common link is being interested in what's going on under the ground really. so if I was starting out um, and giving myself some advice I, I would suggest that I do more or less what I did although that was by accident which is go and dig for a while because actually like um, Ruth said earlier on, there's no substitute for archaeological experience. It really is the basis that you build everything else on. Get yourself into a unit that's got a good geoarchaeology or environmental team and find yourself someone who's interested in teaching you, whether it's a formal mentorship or an informal arrangement where you talk to them about things you found on site and ask them questions. And that let people know what it is that you want to do. Um, it might not happen straight away, um, but it probably will. That is my short and sweet ish talk. And I've saved you 10 minutes. Ooh. I might have dawdled if I was going to employ it. You would not want to be geoarchaeologist. Well, th <laughs> thank you, Dave. Um, and I totally agree. The, the one time when you do actually need geoarchaeologists, nobody's training them anymore, which is a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Um, has anybody got any questions for Dave? Mm -hmm.